It's time for Rick Bentley's TV Beat television program. Stay tuned for former Fresno Bee media and entertainment writer Rick Bentley as he brings the TV Beat column to television with the latest news of what's happening in local radio, television, and more. And now, here's Rick Bentley. Hello and a very hearty welcome to another edition of TV Beat with Rick Bentley. Now this is a show designed to keep you updated on what is going on in local TV, radio, and film. Now that September is here, the networks will begin rolling out their shows for the 2017-2018 TV season. In the past, the majority of the new fall shows would not launch and would launch in September, but that's changed, and now the new programming will continue all the way to the end of late October. Not only will the networks uh, launch new series, but local television stations will be filling the openings in their schedules where there are no network shows with syndicated programs. Uh, there'll be some big changes with a few of the local TV stations, and, and there's so many that I'll take a closer look at those changes in an upcoming episode of this program. Well, there's a lot to talk about this week, so I'm going to take a quick break now, and after the break, I'm going to talk to you about what's going on in local TV and radio. I'll be right back. News. We've got the answer. Opinion. We've got the answer. Insight. We've got the answer. AM 1680 is the answer. With news and opinion every morning on The Hugh Hewitt Show. Live and local talk with Jim Franklin at 8. Plus Dennis Prager at 9. Dave Ramsey with Financial Peace, noon till 3. And now the all-new Larry Elder Show, afternoons 3 to 6. Now, Fresno has the answer for conservative news, opinion, and insight. AM 1680, the answer. Nice. Protecting your home and family is as easy as Safeco. It's easier than this, or this, or even this. For over 30 years now, Safeco has been the local company offering simple protection to homes and businesses. They service and monitor most systems, so you don't have to resort to this. Protecting your home or business is as easy as Safeco. Well, I'm going to the beach where I belong. It's Pepsi Nights. Wednesday and Thursday nights after 5. Bring a Pepsi can and get unlimited rides for just $14.95. Including new rides like Shockwave. And Typhoon. It's after 5. Wednesday and Thursday night. $14.95. Unlimited rides. That's so cool. At the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk. In the warm California sun. This summer, the choice is easy. Take fun at Wildwater Adventure Park. There are so many ways to splash away the summer in our 52 cool shady acres, full of rides, slides, and awesome adventures for everyone. You can score with every ride on Kaleida Slide. It's part water slide, part video game, and totally cool. So come run the rapids, ride the slides, or play all day in Adventure Bay. Whatever you choose, Wildwater Adventures has a full day of fun for everyone. The coolest choice this summer is Wildwater Adventure Park in Clovis. Start my update on what's happening locally with a new hire at Fox 26. St. Louis native Amika Ramsey has joined the news team at KMPH as a reporter. Now, before coming to Fresno, the University of Missouri graduate worked at WTOK. That's a station that covers eastern Mississippi and western Alabama. Before that, she worked in uh, Columbia, South Carolina as a general assignment reporter. Now, uh, up next, it's another story I've been uh, been following for a few months, and it has to do with Connect With Me, the program hosted by veteran newsman John Malos that airs at 10 a.m. weekdays on Fresno Channel's KGMC and KVBC. The show was on a hiatus for several weeks, but has returned with new episodes of the program. It came back in late August. Todd Lopes, who's directing the operation of the station, did not respond when asked about the hiatus. Uh, the only explanation I heard was that there was uh, some kind of internal matters that caused the hiatus. This could be anything from giving Malos a few weeks off rest uh, to contract talks. Uh, the bottom line is that new episodes of Connect With Me aren't airing right now. Now, Valley PBS in the Clovis Veterans Memorial District will be hosting a special event starting at noon on Sunday. September 17th. This is a connection with the broadcasting by the local public television station of the new 10-part documentary on the Vietnam War, set to begin airing at 8 p.m. that night. 
uh, those who attend the event. Will, that's going to be held at the Clovis Veterans Memorial District Building at 808 North 4th Street in Clovis. We'll be able to view art by Vietnam veterans, visit booths for Valley Veterans Service organizations and community groups offering outreach services. They can attend a performance by the AUSA Sounds of Freedom Band, uh, walk on an oversized map of the Vietnam region, and sign where they serve while in country. Uh, Vietnam veterans will also be able to record their personal memories on video in a testimonial area during the event. And finally, CMAC, the local facility that gives the public a chance to learn about TV production and get their own work shown on cable, is hosting a 12-hour film race. Now, the event challenges budding filmmakers to create a three to five minute short film in under 12 hours. Now, this will be on September uh, 30th. The competition will start at 9 a.m. Saturday and obviously end at 9 p.m. that night. Now, the films will be judged and cash prizes will be awarded at a special screening event at 6 p.m. Thursday, October 5th at CMAC. First place gets $500, $250 for second, and $100 for third. Now, the films will be judged on quality and not how fast they get made. This is a competition that's open to the public, so contact CMAC for more details. All right. Now I'd like to turn the attention to local public radio. Whenever there's talk about federal budget cuts, the first thing that comes to most people's minds is uh, local public television. But public radio has been supplying a lineup of locally produced news, public affairs, music, and talk programming on KVPR FM 89.3 since 1978. That means it'll be celebrating a 40th anniversary next year. Well, my guest tonight is Joe Moore, who's the director of program content for KVPR. I thought we'd talk to Joe and get a little insight into what's going on with the station. Talk to him about everything from uh, programming to uh, the, that nasty funding situation that's going on. It seems to be the talk all the time. So I'm really happy to introduce Joe Moore. Rick, thanks for having me. Oh, listen, thank you for, uh, I really appreciate you being here tonight. Look, before we get into the sort of the elephant in the room with the, all that's going on with the radio station, we'll talk a little bit about you. Now, how long have you been in this market? I'm a Fresno native, born in Fresno, grew up in Clovis, and I've been here pretty much my whole life. Go to college? Here? Yeah, Fresno State grad, studied history there, not broadcasting. History. But I wound up actually working at the university and, and taught audio production there for a little while. Yeah. So what got you into the radio world? I was always interested in broadcasting in some way. I remember growing up watching Bob Long on Channel oh, 24 yeah. and, you know, all the other local uh, people who are on, on TV. And, and also we had an early satellite dish uh, before the, you know, the digital one. So we would watch <laughs> newscasts from all over the country. And I guess I always had some interest there. But I was at Fresno State and volunteered at uh, KFSR and right. started out that way. So, uh w so that was your first, KFSR was your first radio work. Did you work at other stations? or? Yeah, I did some freelance work. Also did work at uh, KTIP in Porterville, doing sports broadcasts for nice. them. Uh, did some things for uh, KFIG here at, when it was uh, doing sports in this area. Worked at Valley Public Radio about mm, 15 years ago oh. on air. <laughs> Left there, uh, got hired by the university to run uh, to manage the, the radio station there, all the students and volunteers, and also teach audio production. And I've been at VPR now for going on seven years. Right. And we, the, your title was something I knew I was going to stumble over, but I got it out. Well, what exactly do you do? I'm in charge of programming for the station and also our radio station operations, any other content we produce, our website, social media, all those things. So it used to be this program director, now it's program content. All right. Well, now that we know you, we, I want to get to talk to the station, but I've got to take a quick break here. So we will be back in just a moment. <laughs> Great news if you like music like this. It's KJOY, KJOI, with Fresno's all time favorites, a unique variety of the music you know and remember. Tell us we're too young. Great songs. Spreading the news. Great memories. KJOY, KJOI, 104.3 FM, on TV Channel 16.1, and on the web at KJOI.org. 
you're looking for an in-ground safe, record safe, or depository safe at unbelievably low prices, call Havens to the rescue. If you want a gun safe, large or small, at amazing savings, call Havens to the rescue. If you need to protect your precious valuables from fire and theft, call Havens to the rescue. For alarm monitoring, installation, locks, keys, and a huge selection of safes at great prices, there's just one thing to remember. Call Havens to the rescue. And we're back. Hey, I, my special guest tonight is Joe Moore. He's with uh, KVPR, and Joe's going to give us some insight into what's going on with Valley Public Radio. All right, so I guess we have to get this one out of the way right away. Every time we talk about funding issues, uh, that, that there's trouble in, in uh, government about keeping that money flowing that helps the public television and radio, we always think about television. I said that in my, my intro to this. But public radio depends on funding too, don't they? Absolutely. Uh, as a public radio station, we're a non-commercial station, so we aren't allowed to sell commercial advertising like most uh, for-profit broadcasters do. So we're reliant on uh, mostly support from our community. About 90% of our operating budget comes from what we raise in our building in Clovis. It's donations from listeners. But the other 10% or slightly less comes from the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. Uh, and as you know, Donald Trump, when uh, the president released his skinny budget in March, mm -hmm. I believe it was, uh, he zeroed out uh, funding in, in that budget proposal for uh, the CPB entirely. Right, right. We, we say 10%, which doesn't sound like a massive amount, but in a scheme of things, on a budget, tight budget, when you're working out, you guys don't have a lot of frills in those budgets. That could make some major, you'd have to make some changes, wouldn't you, if, if you lost that 10%? If that funding were eliminated, we would certainly be in a, in a difficult situation. We'd have to reevaluate our programming. Uh, and it would probably be local things, unfortunately, that would have to be cut because uh, our national programming, certainly uh, Morning Edition, All Things Considered, the big NPR news shows right. generates the bulk of our audience and also the bulk of our, our donation revenue. So uh, local programming would be one of those things that, that would be under pressure there, but we would n in no circumstances be going off the air. So th let's make that very clear to the public that if you lost it, if the sky fell and the 10% was gone completely, you guys would be on the air the next day. We you'd would, be, and we'd be fundraising trying to make up that 10%. Make, make up that 10 So then you'd go back to that public who's been very loyal to you and everything and just basically say, we could stay on the way we are, without these local programs. If you love those local programs, now's the time to sort of step up again. Yeah, I mean, we wouldn't, I don't know what local programs specifically would be right, in danger, exactly. but, but we would certainly uh, ask our listeners who have supported us for going on 40 years now uh, to uh, help fill that gap. And I, I think, you know, the good thing is that there's been bipartisan support in Congress, and the news is that out of the U.S. House, the budget that they, the pr proposal that's right now in the U.S. House includes CPB funding. So the, the news is d right now looks good. But anything can happen. Yeah, it's Washington. Do you guys have to keep it in your mind? It's We're just going to go on with our work as if everything is the same? Or do you have to keep it in the back of your mind? We need to be planning. We have, you know, we need to be stocking the, 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 the shelter with food <laughs> in case something happens. Or, or do you just do your job? I think it's both and, Rick. Uh, we have to continue doing our mission of informing and inspiring uh, the Valley through music and, and news. Uh, that doesn't change. Certainly we have to be, and we always are, very prudent and, and fiscally cautious with our funding. We've never uh, had to, to lay off uh, an employee at our station. We take great pride in that. We've been yeah. smaller and maybe slower to grow than, than uh, other stations in other markets perhaps uh, because of that, but we've been very conservative fiscally and uh, have, I think we've been good stewards of our, our donors' money. We're a four-star rated charity navigator organization. Wow. Uh, of that that staff you have that puts that keeps the station mm -hmm. running and everything, is it all paid people, or do you have a lot of volunteers that work for the station? How does that work? We have a lot of volunteers who help out with things, but our on-air staff is is all paid. So the the volunteers it's, would be behind the scenes doing. Yeah, Paperwork helping with mailings, and, helping with our on-air campaigns. So we do have volunteers on-air during our uh, fundraising appeals right. four times a year, and, and they help out greatly there. Uh, and volunteers help out with our wine tasting event and, and uh, a lot of other events that we do, but the on-air staff is professional. Well, say if I wanted to volunteer, is a, do I just call the station? Do I, is there a website? Is, what do I do? You can do both. There is a website, uh, kvpr.org. Uh, that's probably the best place to start. Right. Uh, you can also give us a call, uh, and uh, we'd be happy to, to hear from you. 
Yeah. What have you got going on as far as programming is concerned? Anything that we it's coming up that's really big for you guys right now? Well, this last week, or a little over a week ago, we just launched a new series of special reports uh, about the Valley's doctor shortage. As we know, this has been a problem going on for about 40 years in this area. We just don't have enough doctors. It's a national problem, but it's mm -hmm. far worse here in the San Joaquin Valley. Wow. And uh, our reporter, Carrie Klein, is ha doing a fellowship with the USC Annenberg School of Communication on this and is really looking at some interesting things, both uh, addressing some of the reasons for this problem and also some potential solutions that are out there that local healthcare leaders at UCSF Fresno and other entities are looking at. So that's new. We're also doing a series about water contamination in communities across wow. the valley. Well, unlike other radio stations where I just tune in and uh, I listen to whatever song is on at yeah. that time, you have specific programming that I want to know about. Now, how do I, how do I find out what's on and when it's on. The best thing to do is go to our website, kvpr.org. Uh, quick thumbnail a sketch of the programs on the station. Mornings, morning news with NPR from 3 a.m. to 9 a.m. In the middle of the day, we have classical music and a, and a noontime show called Here and Now from mm -hmm. uh, NPR. And then the evenings from 4 to 7 p.m., we have more national news from NPR. We have our local stories interspersed throughout those national newscasts as well. Well, you guys continue to prove how important public radio is for this market. Talk, everything from the national programming to the local stories you're doing. So let's just hope things keep going well for you guys. So We, we think so, and we're, we're encouraged. Joe, thanks for coming in and, and sort of filling in the people on what's going on with public radio. I appreciate it. Thanks, Rick. It's great to be here. All right. We're going to take a break, and I'll be back in just a moment. <laughs> This summer, the choice is easy. Pick fun at Wildwater Adventure Park. There are so many ways to splash away the summer in our 52 cool shady acres, full of rides, slides, and awesome adventures for everyone. You can score with every ride on Kaleida Slide. It's part water slide, part video game, and totally cool. So come run the rapids, ride the slides, or play all day in Adventure Bay. Whatever you choose, Wildwater Adventures has a full day of fun for everyone. The coolest choice this summer is Wildwater Adventure Park in Clovis. Hello, welcome to Alberto's restaurant. Come on in. At Alberto's you will have a new experience at great Italian dining. We have fantastic pasta dishes like fettuccine alfredo and eggplant parmesan. And you have to come in and try the chicken marsala and the calamari con limone. I take great pride in everything I prepare and I know you will love it. And what's dinner without a little wine? At Alberto's we have a great selection of wines to go with your dinner. Alberto's Restaurante in Pacific Row. Come and see us tonight. Salud. You know, Fresno continues to be a place where filmmakers come to be able to make their projects at a low cost and without a lot of red tape. For one filmmaker, working in the Fresno area is coming home. Valerie McGaffrey is a Roosevelt High School graduate who held jobs in Hollywood for more than 30 years. Now, after graduating from California State University, Long Beach, she worked for Chuck Barris and Cheech and Chong doing uh, casting work, publicity, and production. McCaffrey was a vice president of casting at uh, New Line Cinema for six years and director of casting at Universal Studios for eight years. She cast James Cromwell in Babe, a role that uh, earned him an Oscar nomination. She became, a, she became an independent casting director in 2000 and worked on Hard Candy, American History X, Dark City, and Problem Child. Now these days she's making movies. McCaffrey was in the Central Valley in August to shoot part of her project called Dirty Bomb. Uh, it, she was at an abandoned correctional facility near Carruthers. It served as a World War II prison camp for the filming. Now the cast and the crew worked through nearly 100 degree temperatures shooting scenes that were uh, supposed to be taking place during one of the coldest winters in German history. Uh, and they were all wearing wool clothes. I had a chance to visit the set, and here's what McGaffrey said about the project. This is a short film that's going to be developed into a feature-length film. Uh, and the feature-length film is uh, uh, going to be following the same storyline, but with a different twist. Now, can you, I don't want you to give away too much of the plot, but can you give me a basic gist of what the story is about? Uh, this story is about the Jewish prisoners who actually sabotaged the V2 bomb during the Battle of the Bulge. And um, I wanted to, I was so inspired by this story that I wanted to tell this hero's story. Um, my uncle, how the story came up is my uncle ended up finding, fighting in the Battle of the Bulge. 
and uh, my cousins mentioned about the bombs being you know manipulated and I, I inquired more and did research and I ended up uh, you know writing the short and uh, casting Ido Samuel in the lead and uh, you know raise money through Indiegogo and donations and all of that so here we are in Fresno yeah now for the people who don't understand the process once a short is completed then you take it and shop it around don't you it's film festivals and studios and that sort of thing is that the way it works yes and actually this movie is going to be shown at the La Femme Film Festival I'm being honored there actually October 22nd and they have uh, slated a special screening for this movie wow it does yeah. it I, I know your passion for filmmaking and you've always had that does it get a little bit more special because you're back home yes absolutely and people have been incredible here and I'm happy to show um, uh, actors and individuals that have never been to Fresno uh, and and also I love the fact of getting the community working in film because I think that there's a lot of potential in Fresno I think there's a lot of less red tape to make a movie here and I think it becomes a community effort and that's always it becomes special because of that right. uh, uh, what, you know, talk a little bit about this facility you found to shoot. This is this is almost like it was built as a set. I mean, it looks so good. Could you just talk about the luck of finding this sort of place to shoot? Yeah, I contacted Christy over in the uh, economic de department. She gave me a list of uh, places, and I took one weekend, and I went, and I visited all the places, and I came across this, and I just couldn't believe how perfect it was. Uh, it was almost like it was made for our movie. And we just then I then the next uh, next couple of weekends I bought the director of photography uh, to take a look at the facility. Everyone signed off on it, and then we started developing the movie to shoot here. All right, last question: How many days shooting in in the Fresno area, and then how many days have you shot outside here? We shot three days in. Uh, we're going to shoot three days in Fresno, and then we shot two days out in Mount Pino for the snow for the Battle of the Bulge scenes. I also talked with German-born Stefan Simon, who got into acting in a very unusual way. Stefan, so you're, you're in, in this film. Can you just talk a little bit about the character that you're playing, who he is? Yeah, so Heinrich is uh, an SS officer in charge of the camp. So he is responsible for having the workers get into uh, their work and work on the V2, which is very important for the Third Reich and for Hitler, because Hitler wants to turn around the war by introducing this new weapon nobody has. So this is a very responsible job, getting uh, the, the slave workers um, into their job and, and uh, keep, the, keep the whole camp running. So that's basically Heinrich in charge of the camp. Yeah. Now, and acting is not your first career, is it? You you, you come from a, another profession, right? Absolutely. So uh, I'm a trained lawyer and uh, yeah. long-time attorney. Yeah. So yeah. why why acting? Why yeah. why make the switch? Yeah. Well, uh, after you know you have one career, you think what else can there be? And uh, I always wanted to be in acting. Also in high school already, yeah. I did a lot of theater. Yeah. Robert Aker talks about his role in the movie. Well, my character is, uh, is uh, Samuel, and he's like a very intelligent man and um, a purposeful man, and he's the mentor to Aaron, the younger character, and I'm the mastermind of the resistance uh, to, to uh, uh, destroy or to um, the, the guidance systems of the V1 and V2 rockets. The way I see my character is that he's in a this place alone, but this kind of character always has a moral, deep moral drive and concept, and that drives his life to take whatever little uh, 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 power or influence he has and whatever resources and make the best to do something great and moral for the world and save other people. So no matter even in his last breath, this character, even though he sees his friends being beaten and dying for this in the, the camp, the higher purpose of the morality of doing this for the world is paramount. 
And lastly, Ido Samuel, a popular actor in his home country of Israel, talks about what he wants this movie to get across to viewers. Yeah, I'm playing Aaron, who's uh, a Jewish prisoner who, before the war, he was a scientist who worked building bombs and he has all the knowledge about it. So when the war started, he came to the concentration camp and they used his knowledge to help build bombs. And, uh, and uh, basically, in the, they, they used his uh, abilities to build the V2 bombs, which was Hitler's last chance to win the war. And uh, he's facing the, the big question if to help the Nazis and stay alive or if to sacrifice himself and save other people. And uh, in the movie, he chooses the right thing to do. Yeah. And we hope that the message will come across to people that one person can save so many lives by making the right choice. Even though it doesn't seem at the moment, okay, but he risked his life, he gave so much, but you know, some t something is above it. And my characters also believe that even though he's in the worst situation, in the worst place, suffering the, from the worst people, you always feel like there's something above it. There's a reason for everything. All right, I'll keep you posted on McGaffrey's efforts to get the short film turned into a feature. I'll be back in a moment. You know us, we're the Fresno Breakfast House, a great place for breakfast or lunch. Did you know we have a beautiful banquet facility? The Grand Banquet Room, adjacent to the Fresno Breakfast House. It's one of Fresno's newest event venues. Our location makes the perfect event center for bridal and baby showers, birthday parties, award ceremonies, family reunions, holiday parties, and conferences. Our lovely venue includes AV equipment and can host up to 130 guests. We combine casual elegance with unbeatable values. Call the Grand Banquet Room for your next occasion. News. We've got the answer. Opinion. We've got the answer. Insight. We've got the answer. AM 1680 is the answer. With news and opinion every morning on The Hugh Hewitt Show. Live and local talk with Jim Franklin at 8. Plus Dennis Frager at 9. Dave Ramsey with Financial Peace, noon till 3. And now the all-new Larry Elder Show, afternoons 3 to 6. Now, Fresno has the answer for conservative news, opinion, and insight. AM 1680, the answer. Come experience Lin's Fusion, where the flavors of Asia come together. Lunch or dinner, Lin's offers an endless buffet, including sushi, dim sum, vegetarian, teppanyaki, all freshly prepared with warm family hospitality. Complete your meal with one of 14 flavors of exotic tea prepared at your table. Lin's Fusion, where the flavors of Asia come together seven days a week. 5155 North Blackstone in Fresno. Visit us on the web at linsfusion.com. If you're looking for an in-ground safe, record safe, or depository safe at unbelievably low prices, Paul Havens to the rescue. If you want a gun safe, large or small, at amazing saving, Paul Havens to the rescue. If you need to protect your precious valuables from fire and theft, Paul Havens to the rescue. For alarm monitoring, installation, locks, keys, and a huge selection of safes at great prices, there's just one thing to remember. Paul Havens to the rescue. Well, that's this week's show. I, uh, I want to give a special thanks to Valerie Bitt McGaffrey for allowing me so much access to her project. i also like to thank you for tuning in. Your support is so richly uh, appreciated. Whether you've found the show for the first time or you've seen every episode, I really thank you. Now, I still need you to spread the word that TV Beat with Rick Bentley is being broadcast on KGMC, hey Channel 43.5. It's also known as Antenna TV. The first airing of the show will always be at Saturday at 6.30. Check out my website at www.rickbentleytvbeat.com for other details about the show. It's very important to hear from you. To contact me, just send an email to rb at rickbentleytvbeat.com. So until next week, happy TV viewing. I hope you tune in again.